this is a conversation about confidence or assertiveness or ability to be at ease with oneself and i've gone through a a, a full cycle of living as as um, what might what one might call um an introvert or a shy person and i find um that there's some distinctions that can serve you so this is what this recording is about understanding what is what is it that helps when we are trying to be at ease when we are trying to open ourselves up to uh, the world particularly because um unless we open ourselves unless we are willing to be seen unless we are willing to express ourselves completely there is something um some element of discomfort always there in our lives as if to show up in a crowd there's a certain kind of effort to be made a certain kind of prep that is necessary and we need to show up as somehow more perfect version of ourselves than who we are for ourselves when we are on our own so this is this conversation is about distinguishing what does it take for us to be completely at ease to be more fully self expressed when we are among people when we are among crowds when we are uh, when we are performing or making presentations in in a corporate setting or if we are making a public speech so what is it that goes on and before we go further may i invite you to slow down a little bit because some elements of this conversation will invite you to contemplate to introspect to perhaps look in at what goes on for yourself and that's only possible if you are willing to slow down a little bit otherwise we pace through life without paying attention to what's going on for us so see if you can just bring a little more spaciousness in your thoughts soften a little bit more bring a little bit more ease in your way of being slow down your breath slow down your thoughts slow down in every aspect settle down here let's have a little heart to heart conversation at least it's one side but it's going to be heart to heart about self expression about assertiveness and about confidence so there was a time when we were fully self expressed now if you do not believe in reincarnation then it happened when we were a little baby in fact when we are born as babies we are there is no sense of self consciousness we are fully self expressed we are we are yelling at the top of our voices when we like we are crying we are laughing we are giggling we don't care for how we are dressed or not babies are fully self expressed in fact when a baby is born there is no sense of self in the baby there is no separate identity for the baby the baby is as if the universe think about a leaf on a tree the tree the leaf does not know that it is not the tree so it thinks of itself as the tree itself just like that the baby thinks of itself as the universe all there is is oneness so what is there to be conscious about or self conscious about baby is fully self expressed when it feels like catching something touching something it reaches out when it wants to grab something say mother's hair it will grab and when it is hungry it will yell at the top of the voice it's just a spontaneous reaction to whatever is ex- the baby is experiencing could be joy could be pain could be unhappiness or could be just loneliness but it is complete self expression but then as little bit little by little the baby grows it acquires language you see initially when the baby is small there is no language it doesn't even know its own name it doesn't know its name is amit or its name is whoever you are that you're listening it doesn't know so there is no separate identity but gradually the the language is acquired it starts with perhaps the parents or siblings and they start telling you okay you are amit 
you be aware about what are you up to how do you appear are you doing the right thing or not don't spill milk dress up properly do not yell talk properly little by little more and more instructions come start coming the way of the baby the baby is taught to be more self conscious a separate identity is being created for the baby a separate individual self is being created it wasn't there so far baby was everyone there was it was all the self was everywhere there was no separate identity so right now with this pointing out don't spill your milk who is spilling milk the baby is first things and then there is finger pointing okay you think what well, how are you doing what are you doing and some things will get approval and some things will get disapproval some things will get a reprimand and this continues for long long years initially it might be some gentle nudges okay this is how you should do this is how you should dress up this is what you should do this is where you should relieve yourself and this is where you shouldn't a little by little more conversations follow and then the baby grows up goes through school draw your lines vertically straight or horizontal but make them straight why aren't your straight lines proper why are your alphabets not coming out right why are not why are you not reciting your poems right there is more judgment there and then the friends why are you not running fast enough why are you dressed up funny why is your shirt not smart enough etc 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 so there's a ton of judgment that goes on and this is how the identity is being shaped this is also the civilization of the baby it wasn't born civil it couldn't be thrown into the society all naked so it had to be dressed up in mannerism but unfortunately this is also how the baby is becoming self conscious learning to think for itself learning to think about itself forming an opinion about itself and that opinion isn't unfortunately very pleasant think about how often the baby hears about things that can be improved or need to be more better different than the appreciation that the baby gets oh you are all right as you are there isn't enough of that even if there is there is far too much stress upon okay change this and it has to be there otherwise we would we would all be walking around like animals so it's necessary for us to be civilized and so parents did the right thing teachers did the right thing friends and later even advertisements all of them that brought us to be more self conscious it was essential that we grow up and start thinking about how we adopt to the society how we adjust living with each other it was essential but then it brought great sense of self consciousness so it raised a certain sense of concerns the babies you me every one of us started being concerned started thinking about a certain kind of self doubt so you and immediately there's a concern what did i do wrong did i spill milk just now or what did i do wrong am i dressed up proper did i say something wrong so as soon as a, a conversation begins with the baby or attention is brought to the baby it it evokes a sense of oh what did i do so it raises a certain sense of spontaneous emotional impulses self consciousness is formed of some concerns about oneself and one of those concerns are what's wrong here what did i do when you're looking at me what are you looking at is there something inappropriate is there something not okay about me that's my concern that's every baby's concern that's every man and woman's concern that we were uh, how our individuation how our individual identity was created so somehow as soon as we started being conscious about ourselves we became conscious for of looking out for what's not all right about us so that's first concern another is what did i do wrong what's not all right about us when i'm saying what's not all right about us it's about all aspects of my being it's about how i look how i speak what are, what what am i carrying from home where is my home what about my relatives my background where do i work what did i study everything so there's something which could be which may not be perfectly all right in fact it seems it's it's bad i haven't figured it out yet so when you're looking at me i'm constantly looking for what's not all right in fact think think about it like this when you buy a nice car 
you bring it home when you bring the car home initially it's all nice and shiny but as soon as you bought it as soon as you brought it home you 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 are now looking for what's not all right about it your opinion about things that you acquire suddenly drops and now all the other options that you have you start comparing the with, with them again or think about it like this when you've cleaned your car you've washed your car particularly men would know this you're constantly looking for where is dirt on them and even after it's properly washed you're still looking for that one speck of dirt okay now i found it and think about it another way if you've made a great presentation people are saying you've done a great job but you're not satisfied with that is it you keep looking for what did i not do right until you discover something that didn't go well okay i should have improved there you know there is some aspect of your work which wasn't all right you just don't know what it is yet because that's how our identities came to be created that you pay attention what are you up to something is not okay about you see something is not all right and now this suddenly make brings in that discomfort within us and that discomfort is present all our lives and we are trying to overcome it cover it up make up for it trying to improve somehow get better than how we were yesterday get better than how we were than other people in compare and that evokes a sense of assessment so we find ourselves wearing glasses of assessment all our lives we are comparing ourselves to yesterday we are comparing ourselves to other people we are comparing ourselves to how we ought to be and there is a sense of sense of assessment forever present for ourselves as well as for everyone else so we go through our lives living lives of assessment It's right now to see some sort of assessment is present right now as well you may be looking at how is it going on for you is it going on for me or not you may be paying attention to that or you may be paying attention to am i speaking is amit speaking some sense is he saying it sensibly is this making sense or not or where is the point of it is there a freedom beyond it or not this all of these are assessments so we find ourselves caught in a paradigm in a realm of continuous ongoing assessments and think about this that a person who's constantly obsessed with assessments assessment for oneself assessment for other people doesn't have much time for appreciation and little appreciation which is there or for moments which that appreciation which is there is immediately followed with some form of assessment or another okay i too need to be as good as the other person or i i need to maintain this wonderful performance that i've just made so this assessment something that catches us and at um in landmark trainings owners landmark trainings they talk about a few sets of concerns which take shape when such individuation happens or individual identity is created the first of, of those concerns is something is wrong here something is wrong to do with me as i just explained another of our con- of those concerns is i don't belong here do i it's as if look like i need to earn my place among these people that i'm with among my colleagues in my in my company or uh with my friends i need to earn my place they may not uh, let me in unless you know it's like that kind of an urge that okay that takes shape when somebody says what are you doing what are you wearing are you doing this right are you wearing this right so you need to do all of that to somehow belong to somehow be allowed entry into this club called your friends your relatives your colleagues your industry whatever it is you don't belong naturally you can't be yourself fully open and at ease and still find entry there that's the second such concern and the third of those concerns is that i need to deal with life alone that i do not i i don't i think in all of this i might be alone i have to deal with all of these challenges alone whatever is going on i might have to confront all of them alone there is nobody who can help my mother can't help me i need to draw those vertical lines myself 
I need to be dressed and speak up on my own. In all aspects, somehow there's an element of how I'm on my own. And I believe there's also the fourth, which is also with some element of this concern that I don't belong. This concern, the fourth concern, which to me appears to belong here is that I don't, I'm not, I don't receive or I don't deserve love. I am, I don't, I'm not worthy of love. I'm not spontaneously, I can let myself be and receive ton of affection. It's not all, it's not possible for me that I am unloved. I'm uns somehow not spontaneously loved. You see, when we were babies, we belonged to the universe. We were universe. We were existence. And so we didn't have to earn our place into the existence. We were existence. They were, we, were, we were there, all there is. Like the leaf thought of itself as the tree, we thought of ourselves as existence itself. So there was never a, mo a need to, to earn. We could just be ourselves. We could take off whatever we were wearing and still be loved. But now there was a need for us to earn our affection, earn approval. And therein forms this natural urge to look good, avoid looking bad. I must dress up better. I must carry a certain kind of brand. I must work in a certain kind of company. I must have a certain kind of money. I must have good kind of good friends, the kind of friends who are impressive to others, relatives. I must marry the kind of people who are from my caste. Otherwise, some people may not let me into them. So this need to look good and, and avoid looking bad. And not, find, not let ourselves be caught looking bad. Not let ourselves be caught making a mistake like you're wrong. Mustn't come to be that. I must have take great responsibility to put myself in good light somehow. So that becomes a very fundamental urge. It becomes a very spontaneous and a survival instinct, if I may say. It becomes that instinct to, to, to strive, to survive spontaneously, always. There will be an urge to look good. And there's no escape because it was formed as I was formed. I existed as universe. I came into existence as Amit. When I, they were telling me, you're not dressed up right. Do something about it. You are not doing, drawing your lines right. So, uh, so Amit was created as self-consciousness. So it's never going to go away. We will always be concerned about how we look. We'll always be concerned about am I right or not. We'll always be concerned do I belong? Perhaps not. We'll always be concerned about I might have to deal with this world alone. And perhaps I don't deserve love. I need to earn it. All of these concerns will forever be there with us. So this is what, what shapes our self-consciousness. And it steals whatever ease that we might have in our self-expression. We are no longer free to express ourselves. We can't set ourselves free to be till this impulse, this emotional impulse is gently healed. There may not be a time perfect, uh, 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 such a time when we have got rid of all of it. But we can learn to do something about it. First is to catch it. The first step is to be aware about it, how it is driving our lives. There are times that we are taking decisions that, uh, that need to look good, avoid looking bad, um, drives our lives. Like for example, not trying out new ideas not trying out new performance ideas. Like for example, I love to sing, I may, not, I may not sing in public. I like to, I have a point to make in the meeting, but I'll stay quiet because I wonder if it will make me look bad. Or I'm spending far too much money on brands to, which will, which I need to associate with to get that personal validity that others will say, okay, this guy is now worthy. That doesn't happen, does it? 
the more we buy, the more we need to buy. The more we improve, the more we need to improve. So it doesn't, it doesn't, we are never quite done with it. So the first thing is to catch what is driving your immediate decision. What is driving your choice? Are you choosing this particular career because you love it? Or are you choosing it because what do people think? It looks good when I give this resume or you, I give this visiting card. All of such choices drive your lives. So the first thing is for you to figure out and see how many of these are present. It's not that you, you're fully getting rid of them right now, but bringing great awareness to it. And that gives you a choice whether you want to go right or left. Do you necessarily want to buy that brand that you can't quite afford? Or do you want to, all right, you, want to, you may want to buy it because it comes to you, it's all right. But you have, now have a choice whether you want to go this way or that way. At least it gives you a choice. Otherwise, we would have gone that way without even thinking about it. You're not paying attention to what you might want. You're thinking about uh, 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 thinking more about how it might look. That's our instinct. So now you have a choice also to think about what makes me most comfortable. What do I love to wear? What feels good to me on my skin? How do I feel when I'm actually wearing this? Are these heels far too comfortable or uncomfortable for me when I'm walking fast? I don't know if we are something more comfortable. So that's the first thing to do, to be more aware. And then we can somehow start also paying greater attention to self-affection, self-love, self-acceptance. You see, there would never be a time when they would all line up and say you're perfect. And even if they lined up and said you're perfect, you may not still see yourself as all done and, and you know, perfect. So it has to be generated from within. You need to get off your own back. You need to bring your own approval, acceptance, spaciousness to yourself. Bring that affection, that bring that love, that little baby needed or deserved and got unquestioned. There was no conditional uh, reason for or conditional deserving of that love that baby wanted to, had to do to get that so can you bring that love once again because you see these concerns that were born that that took birth along with individuation along with your cry, identity are all unfounded there is nothing wrong with you it's just a concern it's just an impulse an emotional looking out what's wrong there isn't anything wrong. This is how you are. It's all right. And it's all right to let yourself be. You see, you'll never get done. You'll never get all cooked and dressed up that this is now done. I can't get any better. It's always stepping forward. So first is bring yourself a lot of affection. Bring yourself a lot of spaciousness. Get off your own back. Be on your own side. Begin to acknowledge that in your ordinariness, there is some aspect of your uniqueness, that unique personality which God has given you. There's something beautiful about how ordinary you look. Let yourself be seen. And it's there that you will also find your self-expression. Talk your heart. Let your heart say its thing. Whatever it is meant to sing, let it, let it, see it. Let it be seen a little bit more rather than showing up as somebody more perfect or somebody who's, who rings right or is all... Allow your real self to show up a little bit more. You might discover it's not too much out of tune with what is nice, what works as well. But it's only that you don't make any so much effort anymore. It becomes, Life becomes more and more easeful. Allow yourself a lot of spaciousness. Allow yourself a lot of generosity of being allow yourself this appreciation not because something not because you did something you appeared some way not because you look fantastic right just because just because you you uniquely you and it's all right that itself is enough so now there are many ways to do that one of them is affirmations and it grows. You might be surprised that you never can quite get free of self-consciousness. But this aspect of 
I love myself, I appreciate myself, I value myself. And it's all right, I'll never be perfect. I'll always have this urge not to accept myself, but I bring love to that urge. I bring love and healing to that. This kind of conversation with yourself, this kind of affirmation, it does make a difference because your words create your world. When you start talking to yourself in a fashion which is supportive, which is spacious, which is easeful, which is, you are taking your own side. You're bringing spaciousness. You know, what does the spaciousness mean? It's about, don't get on yourself. You know, don't squeeze yourself in a corner because one reason or another. Let yourself be. Let loose a little bit. Play along with your own self. So see if you would like to try that out a little bit. Allow that to be the beginning. We're just beginning this conversation. There are many elements of this. As we go forward, we begin to talk about what does it take to start saying no? What goes on that we can't help, take help? What goes on that we can't fully appreciate another human being? But this is a good start. Start with appreciating yourself, loving yourself. But it'll have to be deliberate. You'll have to remind yourself again and again and again. You'll have to remind yourself perhaps several times a day. And trust me, it'll make a huge difference. Thank you.